Welcome back to Radio Entrepreneurs. I'm Jonathan Friedman. Our next guest up is Hugh Holman, CEO and co-founder of Observa. Welcome, Hugh. Thanks for having me, Jonathan. It's our pleasure. Why don't you tell our listeners a little bit about Observa and what it is you guys do? Sounds good. So at Observa, we're helping uh, brands, our customers, our consumer brands, um, solve the biggest problem in retail, which is poor store execution. Uh, we have a couple mechanisms that help with this. Um, and uh, let me explain the challenge, though, first. So in retail, uh, for consumer brands, it's a pay-to-play environment. So they're paying uh, the stores, the retail chains, for their products to even be on the shelf. And then once they get on the shelf and they negotiate that part of the contract, then they're, they're enticed to pay for promotion. So all the promotions in the store that we see as shoppers walking through the store, those are paid for by the brand. So they pay so, for so that. You're talking about the slotting fees and then the promotion end cap fees and all, yes. all the various fees that add up that consumers don't see. Yeah. And the most obvious one is, is the discount that you'll see on the shelf where a product is normally $9.99. You walk into the store and it's $7.99. Those $2, the $2 there, that comes from the brand. And so all those dollars add up to a trillion dollars in spend annually by these band, these brands globally. And so this is a sizable amount of money across retail, which is one of the biggest business sectors. And so what we're doing is we're helping these brands um, actually understand what happens in the stores, not what they're paying for, but what they actually get. They've never been able to figure this out, right? And, it's and, I, would, and I would imagine one of the biggest challenges I think that you're alluding to and trying to solve is, uh, uh, and not to say that retail is, you're, you're sort of reliant on a third party that is worried about their store, not necessarily your brand. And Correct. So yeah, the, you guys the retail- bridge that. Great. We totally bridge that gap. The retailers, they want to have a good shopper experience and they want to have a good selection there. But when it comes down to an individual brand, as long as the shopper gets something close to what they want and walk out of that store and have bought something, then they're okay. But to the brand, they paid for something. They, their expectations are different. They want to get what they paid for. And so by being able to measure what's happening on the shelf in regard to the merchandising and promotion of their products, they're now able to both improve because you can measure and improve as well as have a different conversation with the retailer in, in their ability to hold them accountable. And so this is a new capability that hasn't been available in the market really before, at, at least at the level that we're able to do it, because we've created a, a platform, the Observa platform, um, that, that approaches this problem from a technology perspective. We're, we're harnessing the value of um, 275,000 workers across North America that we pay to go into these stores, use our technology, our mobile apps on iOS and Android to uh, capture specific information about that brand's products on the shelf and turn it into digital information, into reporting that is both validated that they can trust but also is more complete than they've ever had before. The anecdotal information about how you know, a consumer couldn't find their product in one store, it's really hard to take that argument to a retailer and say, you've got a problem because they can't show them with real reporting the size of the problem. Is it just one situation? Is it everywhere? You know, what is it? And so the other thing that we're doing is we're digitizing those photos that are captured. We always capture photographic evidence. And with the photos, we're able to use artificial intelligence to digitize the photos, identify the products, and create very rapid real-time reporting on results. So we're able to do things like measure um, both uh, the on-shelf availability of the products by SKU, you know, showing how many facings they have on the shelf. Are there two of that same brand products sitting side by side? Are they brand blocked? Are all of the products for the brand associated together on the shelf to really capture the, the buyer, the shopper's attention in the store? And, um, and then we can even drill down and even have what they call planogram compliance, which is uh, the ability to measure exactly to the design that's supposed to be on the shelf there. Planogram is, says which products are supposed to be in which exact locations on the shelf. At the same time, doing planogram compliance allows us to do competitive intelligence. We not only can measure for that brand, we can measure what their competitors are doing. And this information hasn't really been available in the past. And so we're really um, um, uh, charting new territory within the brick and mortar retail space. And it, we liken it to Google Analytics over e-commerce because we're digitizing the store and showing that path to purchase for the consumer, for the shopper. 
that's available on e-commerce and is so powerful there in understanding when you deploy a dollar for marketing, what your return is. And getting to that ROI equation for these brands and brick and mortar is an amazing thing. And we're really happy to be embarking on that path. And we have some other data providers that are helping us with that sales data, the point of sale data, and combining it with the uh, observable data that we provide in providing that, that ROI analysis. So really fascinating. If I caught all that you said there, Hugh, it, it almost sounds as though, and, and not to, to minimize it, but you're taking that mystery shopper and turning them into a brand, uh, um, bringing back da brand data points, right? They're, they're yes. able to capture information, digitize it, and and um, crunch it. Uh, and, and if I heard correctly, 275,000 shoppers, so to speak, yes. or store observers. Yes. Uh, yep. In the U.S. alone, or is this uh, beyond it's the U.S.? US that's the U.S. and Canada. Okay. Wow. So that's a pretty impressive scale. Um, so uh, I would imagine the back end of all of what you're doing is crunching that data. There's a lot of data points that you collect from 275,000 people. <laughs> yeah, a massive amount of data points. And what we know uh, is that over time, the data using our artificial intelligence becomes richer and richer. You know, the deeper learning, and as we combine with other data sources will become even more powerful in identifying, you know, other opportunities from a marketing and merchandising perspective, even optimization of the supply chain. You know, what factors actually play into increases in demand and how do we predict those happening ahead of time and help the brands ensure that they're getting enough product to those stores so that it's available there when the shoppers need it. So what retail segments are you operating in? I imagine um, supermarkets uh, must have, mm -hmm. must be a big piece of it because what does the average supermarket have? Something like 20,000 SKUs or something yeah, yeah, like that? Yeah, 20, <laughs> 20, 25, maybe 30,000. And then, you know, uh, uh, some of the big box stores, the mass merchandisers, they can have, you know, 100,000 products in the store. And and uh, we, we predominantly focus on uh, food, so the supermarket space, whether it's through the supermarket channel or whether the mass merchandise or convenience drug, they all sell food. And uh, we work with the brands where they need that assistance. Um, we do work uh, with companies on other types of products, you know, general merchandise, electronics, uh, durable goods even. Uh, but our focus started with grocery and uh, we continue to do a lot there because of the fast moving nature of those goods. Fast moving consumer goods have higher risk. The high velocity of the products moving on the shelf, the sales pattern, right, is faster. And so therefore they have more to lose if they have poor merchandising, their products aren't available for consumers. And, and I would imagine what you guys were also able to do is either supplant or replace that proverbial store check that their reps are doing. And, be, exactly. and, and I would imagine that historically they've had a hard time aggregating the data and that that, they, that data may be different from one geography to another. Uh, yes. But you guys can really in real time provide them with a lot of that information. So very fascinating. And, and, and again, um, completely uh, impartial, right? You guys that's don't right. Know. That, that's, that's right. And that, this has been a problem. So whether they've um, used their own people to do, you know, spot store checks, sometimes, you know, it's kind of human nature to share the good news and not the bad news. Keep and my job, uh, right. If the store looks great, I keep my job. <laughs> exactly. And, and so that, but that's challenging because, you know, what you really want to know is where I have opportunity for improvement. And because of the impartial nature and the fractured way that we capture the data and pull it together, um, you get a complete view. It's, it's there, you know, you're showing all locations, all shelves, right? And um, that's, that, that gives a much different picture than getting a few spot checks here and there. And, and it really helps them identify patterns. So when you start to look at trending over time, what's happening in one region versus another underneath, you know, one, um, you know, rep in the company that, that is responsible for a particular market versus another, where they use one distributor versus another distributor, you know, so it, it, they can slice and dice the data as needed based on how they manage their, their company, right? And, um, and we help them do that. So it's pretty cool. So so Hugh, how does the business model work? Uh, if I'm a small brand, um, is, is, there an, is there a certain economy of scale? Do I need to be a certain size? Do I need to have a certain number of uh, shelves that or storefronts that I'm in uh, for, for it to be cost effective? Or, or if I'm a small startup brand with uh, 50 doors, a uh, small regional grocer that I'm, can, can I use your services? Sure. Yeah. We work with brands large and small. Obviously, the bigger brands 
um, have the capabilities internally to best use this type of information, right? Because you know, they've had more time, they have more people to understand how these markets work, the nuances, and they have people in place that with those backgrounds to be able to uh, act on the data. Um, uh, but small brands too, especially fast growing brands, you know, find our services highly, highly valuable. You, you're entering cons- uh, competitive spaces against established brands, established companies, and you're buying your way in. Are you getting what you paid for or not? Because you're not going to obtain the growth that, that you know, your goals are set on, right? And so you won't achieve your corporate goals if you're not able to measure what you're doing. You know, measuring and improving, this is a basic principle about all management, right? right. Uh, and so what we do is we help with that where they otherwise don't have the staff or the capability to get out, get out there and get that data. We can get it for them. There, there's another thing I need to hit on here, Jonathan, and that is that, our workers also take action in the stores. So we will engage with store management to solve the problems that are found. We're able to, you know, work with them and get products back on the shelf that that are missing from the shelf set that have been contracted to be there. Uh, We're able to work with them to, uh, uh, you know, restock and add uh, merchandise to the shelf so it's available um, for sale for shoppers to find when it's when they find that it's out of stock there in the store, but there's some in the back room. Um, so store you know, management so, sees it sees it largely as a win win. I was I was curious about that. Do they see you guys as adversarial? They're pointing no. out our weaknesses. No, that's no be, because because they're used to having workers in the store there on behalf of the brands because you know traditionally uh, the food brokers. Um, and out and merchandising companies perform these services. They just don't have the technology beneath them or the intelligence. They're not going to be using AI or anything like that to help them digitize the situation. But um, you know, there's a traditional business there that we're disrupting. It's just that they don't they don't have the technology and don't come from the perspective that we are around complete and and transparency in the data and and, and capturing everything that's there. That's fabulous. I mean, it really sounds like you guys are uh, are, are certainly. I, I don't want to say onto something because you've been around for uh, for a better part of six years, but really mm-hmm. uh, fulfilling a, a a need within the marketplace and uh, and 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 driving uh, brand, I, I guess, um, uh, compliance in, yes. in a lot of ways. And and as you talked about planograms and making sure that uh, that that things are being executed. And I would imagine you you, you probably help store managers because how many store managers can yes. really get on the floor and look and see what's going on? You know, they're busy with so many different aspects of running a store. Um, That's true. So really a service that that blends all those pieces to uh, ultimately make the consumer experience uh, all, it, all, all they're looking for. So absolutely. Fat- Fascinating stuff, Hugh. If uh, people want to get in touch with you, if uh, any brands out there are looking for opportunities to augment their uh, um, uh, performance on on shelves, what's the best way for people to reach out to you? Well, of course, they can go to our website. Our website is observanow.com. So O B S E R V A N O W dot com. Um, they can also reach us at sales at observanow.com. If they want to shoot us an email, we're happy to you know, respond. Uh, you can also make a request directly through our website. There's a form there to ask for more information. Uh, so you know, feel free to reach out. You know, we're, uh, you know, we add customers on a, on a regular basis and, and we're happy to talk to you about you know, how we can help uh, the brands, you know, whoever's out there that's interested achieve their corporate goals, think about improving their store execution and growing their sales, because that's what this is all about. It's about measuring and improving and growing sales. Fabulous stuff. Our guest has been Hugh Holman, uh, CEO and co-founder of Observa. It's been a real pleasure having you on Radio Entrepreneurs. Thanks for having me, Jonathan. Great. Have a great day. And we'll be right back with another segment on Radio Entrepreneurs.